what was the message to the guys when you watched the film of that last drive and what happened there? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there is an overall message. You know, we, we did not play any of us, coaching staff, players, you know, we could have played so much better in that game. And um, obviously there were opportunities uh, to get off, you know, and that's that happens in two-minute drives. If you ask what, what a message is, you know, we've, from the beginning of training camp since, in a two-minute drive, if you have a dropped interception, if you have a chance to get off the field, a penalty, something that, causes you to extend a drive nine times out of ten bad things happen it's i mean it's i don't know what it is but if you if you go back in history of football and you watch how many times there's been a dropped interception at the beginning of a two-minute drive and the offense goes down and scores or in this case you know an interception with a penalty that got wiped away um and you know we've been on on the good end of a, a lot of Good finishes, and it was it's it's tough to be on the the wrong end of it. Um, you know, there are some some calls in that drive that I'd like to have back, and I I told the guys, and they know that, and uh, there are some plays that they would like to have back, but that's that's football, and you can't get them back. And so now we've got to uh, we've got to learn from it. You know, like Coach said, you've got to learn from the scars, uh, and you got to grow from them. And obviously, we've got a, a huge huge test this week. And if we get put in that same situation this week, uh, you know, I'm confident that, that our guys will, uh, you know, be able to, to rise up to the challenge. Brent, obviously, Stetson has a lot of really good players around him, but what makes him so effective using those guys? I, he is playing at an extremely high level right now. I, I'm quite frankly really surprised that, you know, he hasn't had much, you know, Heisman buzz. Like he is playing at that kind of level. Um, he does not get the credit that he deserves in terms of uh, his command of the offense, his ability to distribute all over the field, his ability to create with his legs. Um, you know, check coverages. You know, check plays on certain coverages. Looks. He knows where to go with the ball. He's been in the offense, you know, as long as he has. So he, he's in, in real command back there. Uh, he makes the right reads. And so he's, he's, he's playing as well as, you know, anybody. He's, you know, the best quarterback probably we've faced all, all year. Um, and no disrespect to anybody, but just his, his command, obviously. Uh, Hooker's playing at an extremely high level, so uh, he's, he's done great there as well. So, again, it's no disrespect to anybody, more of a how well he is playing at quarterback right now. Right. Your outside backers have to deal with these guys in particular. But where does that duo of Tyler and Frank against guys you've faced uh, over the years? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is as good of a tight end group as you're going to find in college football. I mean, they're... Uh, their ability to, I think everybody sees their ability to, to make plays in the passing game, you know, and you see uh, Bauer's ability to do a lot of different things, you know, catch bubble screens, take fly sweeps, do do those, but they're also really willing blockers and, and they're able to move guys off the ball and they're really deep, um, you know, and, you know, with Bowers and Washington and Delp and, you know, uh, Gilbert, I mean, the, the whole group, you know, is, you know, any one of those four could could be a starter on any you know program in the country. So um, yeah, obviously they they create uh, mismatches. You know, in terms of their ability to uh, create space with speed, uh, be able to at the point of attack, you know, create separation with their size, uh, and then go up with their length. You know, so. Uh, it allows you know Stetson to throw it up and away. They'll go get it. They've got great hands, really, really soft. Um, and so, yeah, obviously a, a big challenge for us. But they, they've got weapons all over the place. How hard is Stetson's like uh, experience against so many different defenses at his age, uh, playing pretty much seeing everything uh, compared to some of the younger quarterbacks you guys have faced this year? Yeah, I think that. I mean, and. and you know, back to my time when I was in Indy. You know, when you when you face the the Rodgers and the Bradys and the Breezes, like that's that's part of what makes those guys so special is their mind. You know, their ability. They've seen so much. 
and uh, Stetson's seen everything thrown at him, and he's you know he's able to to process through it uh, and put the ball in the right spot, put it, give it to the uh, to the right person, the right playmaker, and um, that that's that's a real challenge. And you know you've got, we've got to try to do a good job of. Uh, you know, you say give him something he hasn't seen. He's probably seen most things over the last three years. So, uh, but we just have to do it really fundamentally sound, and and play at a high level, play with great energy. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, they're going to make you know plenty of plays, but uh, we have to just continue to you know to continue to fight, um, you know, and make plays of our own to to give us a chance. How big is how big is the challenge going to be a one on one player play around the ball? To match up, yeah, yeah, you know that's. Hey, listen, you, you're gonna have to. They're gonna be downs. That guys are gonna be put in one-on-one -on -one situations. You know, against some really you know talented players, receiver wise, uh, tight end wise, running back wise. Um, you know, O line, D line. Their O line's really you know big and strong and physical, and it wears on you throughout a game. So our our D line's got to continue to to play strong and, and firm and sturdy throughout um, so yeah I mean it's a it's a huge challenge um, but that's that's why you come to this conference for those big challenges and uh, you know if we want to continue to, to push the program and elevate the program these are the kind of teams that you know when you got the opportunity they come into your house and uh, in, in front of our fan base who who can get loud and rowdy and you get a you know 3:30 CBS game. I mean, this you, you got to elevate, and all of us do. You know, it's I, I think Coach Monken does an unbelievable job uh, from a scheme standpoint. Uh, the way he calls his plays, the way he packages his plays, uh, how he can get everybody involved. It's a it's a huge you know challenge for us as a as a defensive staff, and you know. Uh, you know, two coordinators going after it, you know, going back and forth. And so uh, we, we all have we all have to rise up. Frank, how would you assess JJ's season as a whole? I mean, obviously you've heard early, but how he's played coming back. Yeah, you know what, it's – I think he's played uh, really well in spurts. Um, I thought, you know, before the injury he was playing at an extremely high level, and obviously he had to sort of, sort of work back into confidence. Uh, level, I thought he played a good game against Vanderbilt. Like I think, um, that's the the thing about when you lose. You like you lose perspective on guys that that did play well. I mean, you think about a Justin Rogers that made nine. Like you don't see that from a nose tackle. Like played really well. Um, I thought JJ played really well. You know, and he's getting the confidence back, sort of in that arm. And it, listen, it's hard to pass rush one armed. Like I, I think people lose fact and, and lose sort of sight of that. And um, and when you're not necessarily the hundred percent, like you know, uh, but I think every week he gets you know stronger and stronger uh, and, and more comfortable with that. And um, you know, but we need we need. Our pass rush to continue to to elevate. I asked Rich this earlier in the year. When you're coming off a game like Saturday, where you're not happy with the performance, are you? How do you react to that? Do you lie in bed awake at night going over those calls, or do you, are you pretty good at shaking it off and moving on to the next next opponent? Yeah, I uh, I, I lie awake. You know, win lose. You know, it, that doesn't matter. Um, but no, I think you just you have to to shake it off. I mean, does. To say it doesn't sting, you know, then I don't think you're a competitor. I mean, that it's got to. Anytime you lose, it has to fuel you. Um, but if you let it get you down, if it if it it changes your mood, if it like, you know, that affects the players. They see that in you. You've got to continue to uh, to stay positive, and you know, it's. I think it shows also in your ability to put the next game plan together. You know, it, it has to fuel uh, you that next week that, okay, I'm going to be better. This, you know, hey, listen, maybe it's not 
you know, more calls, it may be less calls, it may be different style calls. Hey, what can I do to put them in better position this week? And um, as a coach, you can sit there and you can look at all the plays and say, well, if you if they had done this and they had done this and then like this should have been a great call. Well, maybe it's too hard for all those pieces to come together. And so that's really on the call. Um, and, and so uh, I try to be, you know, really critical of myself, you know, and, you know, hopefully that that helps with the next game plan, that it, it can make it easier, make the guys play faster, looser, whatever the case may be. And um, and that's the big thing this week. They got to play confident. They got to play fast. They got to play loose and, uh, and let it hang out. You know, when you play really tough competition, the last thing you need to do is play tight. You sense you challenge and the fuel that you mentioned? you get that? Yeah, I, th I mean, it's been, I think it's been a really good week of practice. I think they've had, you know, really good energy, uh, bounced around, they're focused. Um, but we've said it before, I, I like I've been around game weeks where it felt like that was the best week of practice we ever had and we played poor on Saturday. I've been around weeks where I thought it was the worst week of practice and they played great. Like some, Hey, listen, when, when you're in a profession and it's 18 to 22 year old kids and uh, they got a lot going on in their life and, you know, different things happen. And, and the goal is to, it, it happens in the NFL. There's only been one undefeated team in the NFL. In all the years in the NFL, one team that went, ran the whole thing. Because it's hard to sustain consistency over and over and over. And especially with uh, everything that, that these young men have to deal with on a daily basis. You know, you can message and you can preach, and um, but it's hard to keep focus. It's hard for adults to keep, you know, focus. Uh, and so that's that's our job, you know, as coaches. We got to do a good job of keeping focus and, and blocking out noise. And um, but that's what Coach Stoops has done such a good job of here to me is that he's built that that ability to to rely on culture, on team, to be able to a shelter in in the facility and trust that we all got each other's backs. In certain down and distance situations, is it, are you worried about putting your team be able to blitz those things? Say that again. Sure. Am I am I ner Are you leery about putting Will I put the will I call some zero yeah. blitz? Yeah. Uh, I have in the past, <laughs> you know. Will you call more, right? <laughs> will I call more? Well yeah, we'll, we'll see on Saturday, I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you could give me Coach Monkins down in distance tendencies, uh -huh. that'd be good. <laughs> Everybody good? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah.